How do you do, fellow kids? Commander Ashenfox here with an unusual narrated how-to video. If you like these types of videos, be sure to let me know with a like and a comment, and I'll do more. So without further ado, let's get into manufactured materials farming for the busy Elite Dangerous professional. Firstly, it's important to be honest about the fact that I'm about to show you how to exploit unintended gameplay to achieve the most efficient results. I'm not a game cheat, and I never have been. I feel that a victory earned by cheating is no victory at all. However, where gameplay mechanisms provided by developers are demonstrably unfit for purpose, or clearly broken and forgotten, as is the case with manufactured materials gathering in Elite Dangerous, I'm open to using exploits to get around them. Put simply, the problem with the method of gathering manufactured mats is that it was designed in a previous version of the game. Back then, a system state was a single state that was directly inherited from the controlling faction. One system, one jurisdiction, one state. You could be sure that if you found any high-grade emission signal sources, hereafter referred to as HGEs, in a system in outbreak, then they would contain pharmaceutical isolators. Then the system was redesigned. Firstly, the nature of almost all signal sources would change fundamentally to a semi-persistent POI rather than spawned on the fly as they were in the past. But more importantly, systems were given the ability to have more than one state at the same time. On top of that, HGEs also became jurisdictional, so it became possible to have an HGE that not only might not have the desired state, but might not even be controlled by the correct faction. The net result of this was to add a phenomenal amount of RNG to the G5 mat gathering process. Here's a rough idea how it goes, after identifying a suitable system for a farming run. Roll a two-sided dice, or flip a coin, to see if the system is currently spawning HGEs or not. If it is, roll a four-sided dice to determine how many HGEs there are in the system. If it's a high-tech system in boom, add a two to that roll. Roll a three-sided dice to determine how long the timers have left. If you rolled a 1, you don't have enough time to reach them. If you rolled a 2, you have enough time to reach them. But if you rolled a 3, then you have enough time to exploit one or two of them. Roll a 6-sided dice to determine if the controlling faction actually owns the HGE in question and not one of the other factions present in the system. To be fair, this does seem to skew toward the controlling faction, but it still could be any. Imagine how many states the faction has currently. Maybe 3. In that case, roll a 3-sided dice to see if the HGE is in the right state. Now throw in the mix that FD has made some states override others. For example, remember distribution centers in famine systems. You know why you don't see those anymore? Because famine is a low priority state. Most other states override the famine state and prevent the insertion of the distribution centers. They do still turn up, but incredibly rarely. And now for the cherry on top of this fine poop cake of a gameplay loop. HGEs that are in the right state, owned by the right faction, can still not produce the mats that they're supposed to. This makes me lose my shit, and is why I no longer go after specifically any of the following. Pharmaceutical isolators, military supercapacitors, also known as rocking horse shit, and improvised components. Although, those do have at least one good thing about them, and that's that they're a non-polluted G5 source. A quick note about pollution, since we're basically farming to maximise our trading potential, we care that the mats that we are looking for are not polluted in their instances. For example, core dynamics composites. They aren't difficult to farm, you want a fed controlled system in a state of none, ideally, and they'll pop up regularly. The trouble is, they also share their loot pool with proprietary composites, and in fairly unfavourable ratios as well. There are usually more proprietary composites in such an HGE than there are core dynamics composites. So when farming for trading, it makes sense to try to use materials that don't share their loot pools. So, that leads us to a fair description of what type of HGE we want to use to farm reliably. We want one that has a high priority state, that state should be commonly found, it should spawn a specific G5 material, and no other, that does not share its loot pool. There is only one material that fits this description, Imperial Shielding. Imperial Shielding is found in any Empire-controlled system. Despite several sources stating that Boom is the ideal state to find this material in, the actual best state to find it in is none. This is because while you do find instances of Imperial Shielding in Boom state systems, and you might even find more HGEs in Boom state systems, you might also find proto-heat radiators or proto-radiolic proto alloys, because they are also boom state materials. The nun state spawns only imperial shielding in imperial systems. 
Additionally, being a superpower mat, it occasionally overrides other materials, making it also one of the easiest materials to find. And of course, it never shares its loot pool. You will always find only Imperial shielding and no G4s. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for the other superpowers, as the Federation material core dynamics composites, as we mentioned, aggressively shares its loot pool with proprietary composites. The Alliance are just dirty hippies and lack the technological prowess to spawn mats at all. So, now we have our instructions. We know what to search for. We go to eddb.io and look for high population, high tech or industrial economies that are empire aligned and in a state of none nearby. Once you identify the place, this is the method. In this particular case, I'm actually out farming for core dynamics composites in a fed system in investment. It won't affect the demonstration, all HGEs behave the same way, but it does mean that unfortunately I'm expecting possible pollution from proto-heat radiators and proto-radiolic alloys. The first step is to visit the nav beacon and scan, or use your system scanner to identify all the signal sources. In busy systems the latter will be extremely time consuming, so I prefer just to visit the nav beacon myself. Once the nav beacon is scanned, return to Supercruise and look at your HGE contacts. Filtering for signal sources only can reduce the clutter. Check the owner, the timer length and the state of any HGEs by targeting them and looking up into the top right of your screen for the POI details. The state mentioned should give you some idea what to expect to find inside. Both of these HGEs are owned by the system controller, a federation faction, and the state of both is investment, which is a state that is a precursor to expansion. For our purposes, this is the same as the boom state, and causes spawns of the aforementioned protomats also. As I drop into the HGE, I turn my night vision on so that I can see the debris field and slow down. I identify the materials and immediately start collecting them. As anticipated, the first turns out to be proto-heat radiators. I decide to collect these but not farm the HGE, since there is only one other in the system, and I really would prefer some core dynamics composites. On another day, I might have decided to farm this, as proto-heat radiators are also an unpolluted source. They're useful for exploiting and trading. I head over to the other HGE, which isn't far away, and should still have over 20 minutes left. In order to maximise my time, I'm using a special technique to do a fast approach to the HGE. I'm deliberately overspeeding as I go past the 6 second mark, but as soon as I see 5, I throttle back to 0. This isn't going to prevent my overspeed, but it will be important in a few seconds. As I approach the POI, still overspeeding, I deliberately wait until it's almost disappeared from the top of my windshield, and I press the target dead ahead binding, which untargets the HGE. As soon as this happens, you stop immediately. This works best for approaching things that are not close to the other things that they orbit. So, for example, close orbiting stations are difficult to use this technique on. But, even in the case of those, it can still be done as long as the overspeed is done from the direction of the planet outwards, not coming into the station towards the planet. It works well for approaching player wakes as well. Unfortunately, this HGE also contains proto-heat radiators. Disappointing, but I'm going to farm them anyway as tradables. I'm also hoping that by the time I've spent the 20 minutes farming this HGE, I can return to the nav beacon and see if any more HGEs have spawned. ROS 128 is generally a good source of these. So, I've collected the first batch of proto-heat radiators, and now I want to use this HGE again. In order to do that, I must stay in the HGE and exit the desktop. Exiting to menu will not work, the HGE will despawn, but if you exit the desktop, the HGE does not despawn. Let's see how that works now as I log back in. Right. 
So now I'm back in normal space, I throttle up and engage Super Cruise. As the countdown starts, I throttle zero. This is important while you fly away very fast. You'll now be in Super Cruise travelling at minimum speed. Consult the left panel and note that there is an unidentified signal source right behind you. Target it. You can now throttle up and move away, just enough to turn around and re-enter. You can keep doing this as long as the timer is valid. If you don't target the signal source before throttling up, you'll throttle up at a very, very high speed and have to do a full approach again, so make sure you target the HGE first. A couple of final tips. Since the Alliance do not sp spawn superpower mats, for the intents and purposes of material gathering, you can consider them as independent systems. There doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to which systems spawn lots of HGEs, but high-tech systems with high populations definitely seem to be fairly reliable candidates. Use eddb.io to identify systems with the superpower allegiance you want, which unless you want core dynamics composites or imperial shielding, will always be independent or alliance. A high-tech or industrial economy, and the state that spawns the material you want. The manufactured G5s are found in the following states. Biotech conductors, emission rewards only. Core dynamics composites come from federal systems in state none. Exquisite focus crystals can be mission rewards or combat drops. Imperial shielding comes from imperial systems in state none. Improvised components come from independent systems in civil unrest. The Aguandri is a really good system for these. Military grade alloys come from independent systems in war or civil war. Military supercapacitors come from independent systems in war or civil war as well. Pharmaceutical isolators come from independent systems in outbreak. Proto heat radiators and proto radiolic alloys come from independent systems in boom, investment or expansion. Remember the investment and expansion states are just the same as boom. As mentioned, by miles the best farming candidate is Imperial Shielding. Military grade alloys, military supercapacitors and pharmaceutical isolators are rarely worth farming for specifically. They are just so rare due to that RNG noted previously. The others are generally farmable, so good luck commanders. Ashen Fox out.